Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at a catching sampling guide. For catching, there are five main stats that we're going to be looking at to get the most out of our catching sampling. There are catching efficiency, which is the base stat that you need to get any of your catching done, as well as increase the multiplier on your multi-bug chance. Next up is catching speed. Catching speed is basically how fast you swing your net and the more speed you can get on catching, the better. There is no ca cap on the catching speed, so any source you can get is going to help increase your gains. Your third stat is multi-bug chance and this is capped at 300% and it is very necessary to be able to get the high-end sampling rates. There are only a few sources of it, but one of the main things is equipping the bug squared alchemy bubble to be able to get up to 300%, otherwise it's capped at 100%. The fourth stat is actually your printer sample rate, and you can check this using the construction tab and you can see the printer sample rate here. This is capped at 90%, and this is one of the easiest ways to increase the gains that you get from your printer. The fifth stat is going to be AFK gain rate. So anything that increases your all AFK gain rate or your skill AFK gain rate is going to be a basic multiplier that and basically gives you more resources for all of your other stats. The first piece of this puzzle is going to be equipping the gear that gives you the most catching efficiency and AFK gain rate. For me, this is currently using the Sleek Coif for 10% catching efficiency, the Feral Leathering for another 10%, the Bandito Pantaloon for 12% catching efficiency, and the Spaggy Westerados, which give you the 35% catching efficiency. Depending on the amount of total efficiency that you have, using the Magma Gear or the Dreadlow Gear may be best in slot for you. So no matter what, you will want to use the, the uh, Spaggy Westerados as the 35% catching efficiency will blow the Magma Gear out of the water. But as you get to higher agility amounts and higher levels, you may notice more gains using this, these all stat pieces of gear. Moving on to the next pieces of gear is going to be the Divine Scarf as the best in slot for the Pendant. If you don't have the Divine Scarf or you can't make it yet for various reasons, using the Persephone's Bouquet from the Dungeon's Florbo Shop is the second best in slot. However, the Divine Scarf is much better. Moving on to your rings, you want to use the Serrated Rex rings. These give you 8% skill efficiency to all skills and they are best slot. However, I recommend having at least three sets of these rings so that you can use agility specific for the characters that need agility. Moving on to your specials tab, your first priority should be getting the Giftmas Snoozy Cap, which is the 10% all AFK gain premium hat. Ideally, you want a hat that increases your agility and not wisdom, but I don't have an agility cap, so there we are. Next up is going to be your trophy. The idle skiller trophy is best in slot as it does give you 15% skill efficiency. However, if you don't have this trophy, you can use the Blunder Hills trophy for 3% AFK gain rate. For your wings, you want to use the giant star flower as this gives 13% all AFK gain rate. But if you don't have this, you can use the angel wings or even one of the other roses that give you a lower amount of AFK gain rate. If you don't have any of those, you can use the Gilded of Font Wings as they do give skill efficiency. Next up is going to be your keychains. Your keychains should be all AFK gain rates, and these are going to give you the most bang for your buck. And you really want to use two of the keychains that give you the most all AFK gain rates that you can find. Moving on to your tools, the most important thing is having the Dreadlow Net, as this gives you more catching speed, more catching power, and a lot of agility. Everything else needs to be tools that also give agility, so you want to make a set of tools just for agility, as this is a multiplier. It's roughly nine times the amount of stats that you get that it says. So this says 30 agility, and nine times that is giving you another like 400 agility or 300 agility to this character. So make sure you're using the best tools you can in every slot. And that will also mean that you're leveling this up to make skill mastery more effective later on. 
For your foods tab, you, there are a few foods that are really necessary to use, starting with the Golden Grilled Cheese Nomwich. This gives you more percent to all stats, which gives you more total agility. The agility gives you more efficiency. Other than that, there are two speed foods that you can use. First up is the Buttered Toasted Butter. Uh, this gives you more catching speed. And then also the event item, the missile berries, also gives you more catching speed. Both of these are consumed fairly fast, so make sure you're unequipping these after you're done with your catching sampling, as they can be used up by your automation arm, and they are very difficult, if, if not impossible, to get back, unless another event comes around to give us these foods back. Next up is our talents, and we have a few talents on each tab that are useful, but there's not many, so you're going to have a lot of spare points left over, so you'll be able to do whatever you want with those spare points. So the first thing on tab one is going to be elusive efficiency for more total efficiency on your specialized skills, and then quickness boots to give you more base agility, which is going to increase your catching efficiency. On tab two, you only have two more, which is going to be Sanic Speed to give you more base agility, as well as Garb of Unaging Quality to give you more agility from your equipment. So the higher gear that you have, the more important that this talent is going to be. On tab three, we have a couple more, starting with Telekinetic Logs. This gives us more catching efficiency for every power of 10 logs that you have in your storage chest. So with a billion logs, you're getting 236% more catching efficiency. And then there's a few more bonuses that make this even crazier. So make sure you have as many logs as you can in your storage chest before you actually start doing your catching sampling. After that, you have Briar Patch Runner, which gives your uh, agility impacts your catching efficiency more. So you'll get a little bit more efficiency out of every point of agility that you have. From there, Sunset on the Vines is very good to give you more AFK gains while you're catching. And then the other thing is your Bug Enthusiast, which just gives catching EXP. So I normally don't put my points into here. For other useful talents, you also have Agility again, which gives you more talent levels on Quickness Boots. Swifty Statues, which increases the bonus that you get from Old Reliable, which gives you more catching power. And then Shoe Full of Obols to give you more agility from your Obols. On tab four, there's only two that are really necessary, but two more that do help out. First is the Adaptation Revelation, which gives you a percent to your agility, as well as more max talent levels for Quickness Boots. The most important is skill ambidextry, which gives you a more, um, your agility gives has more impact on your skill efficiency again. And it also gives you another base small amount to your agility itself. The other two that are relatively useful is symbols of beyond that gives you more talent levels as long as you have at least one point into a talent. So this is how you can see some of these talents above the level, the, the maximum level. So I have 10 free levels in every talent because of Symbols of Beyond. The other one is the Family Guy, which gives you a larger family bonus from what's displayed. So if you look in your Family tab, you can see these bonuses. So this character gets more agility. Uh, farther on down, you can see more EXP when fighting. Doesn't really help us too much here. And then we also get the boat time travel. So not a huge effect, but if you have the spare talent points, it can help out a little bit. Moving on to your star talent tab, you have a few things that are important. I haven't leveled this up apparently, but toilet paper poster stamps gives you more skill efficiency. However, there's a diminishing return on this. So after 1.5 times higher bonus, the scaling is very bad and it's basically not worth the points unless you just have a bunch of spare points left over. Also, Will of the Eldest gives you more base stats for your character based on the highest level of each class. So basically I'm getting more agility or uh, 50 more agility, 45 more agility on this character because my highest character is around 450. And then TikTok gives you more AFK gain rate from your skills. On tab two, you have Frothy Malk to give you more bonuses from your potions and boost foods. And then you also have Super Source to give you more base efficiency and Action Frenzy for more skilling speed. On tab three, there's not much that really helps your efficiency other than stat overload, which gives you more agility. This is a flat rate, so 300 agility is 300 agility. Nothing multiplies it, but it's still another bonus for us. 
Next up is going to be your star signs. These three star signs should give you the most bang for your buck, and they are going to be Shoe Fly to give you 5% catch efficiency, 20% multi bug chance, and then after that is Mount Eateris to give you 15% to all food effect. If your food effects aren't that good, you can use the Big Comatose to get more skill AFK gain rate. In the Hydrant tab, the only choice here really is 4% skill AFK gain rate to give you more skill efficiency. So moving through the worlds, we're starting with World 1 and the statues. There are a couple statues that help you out. First is the Feasty statue to give you more food effect. This really helps out those non-witches and the speed foods. After that, farther down is Old Reliable to give you more catching power. It is worth picking up the golden statue unlocks as it's just a few coins and it makes your statues available account wide. After that, we're looking at our stamps and the main thing on the combat tab is getting anything that gives you more agility, such as the agile stamp. And further on down, you have Hermes stamp. And lastly, the sash side, st side stamp, which gives you more agility in total. It is worth mentioning the stat graph as it is a few more base stats as in, as more all stats. In the skills tab, you have a few stamps that are worth it, and that is starting with the catch net stamp, which gives you base catching efficiency. The under leveled notification that you get, keep in mind that this continues to scale as you level this up. So even when you get under leveled, it, it is worth it to continue leveling the stamp up as you'll get more base catching efficiency. After that, you have a few more, such as the Buzz Buzz stamp to give you more multi-bug chance. And farther on down the list, you have the multi-tool stamp, which is more all skill efficiency. This is very expensive, but late game becomes a lot of efficiency to increase your gains overall. For your companions, there are a few that help you out quite a bit with your efficiency and your gains. Starting with Sandy Pot that gives you more base to all stats, more agility helps out your catching, and then Board Bean gives you 5% AFK gain rates to fighting and skills, which is what we need. Multi gives you 5% to all skill efficiency, and the others are more quality of life features. Sheepy makes sure all big bubbles are equipped all the time in Alchemy, which means you don't forget having that big bubble equipped. The Rift Slug gives you plus 25 levels to all talents. This is just a flat increase for your account, so it is worth it if you can get the Rift Slug. King Doot is more of a quality of life feature as it gives you access to all of your divinities. And the only thing that you're really gaining from it is having 3% more AFK gain rates because all of your characters have the Goat God equipped. And the quality of life comes from that you're able to sample with all of your characters at the same time without losing any gains and on any character so it helps out with your overall printing output moving on to world two and in your alchemy bubbles you have a few bubbles that help out quite a bit starting with the swift step in bubble that gives you more total agility for every bubble level that you have now this says 1582 but keep in mind that there are several multipliers so it's more like five times for every one point that you have in the swift steppen so the next bubble is the archer or bust and this multiplies all green bubbles for any archer based class so that gives you quite a bit more agility from the swift steppen at the beginning Next up, we have the um, Sanic tools that give you 45% more skilling power for your catching nets. This does mean that your nets are a lot more effective, so it is worth leveling this bubble up, and you do get the multiplier from the archer or bust. After that is bug squared. This is the bubble that is necessary to be equipped to your character because it increases your maximum multi bug chance to 300%, which is quite a bit more than the base 100%. It requires level 185 to max this out at 300% without any other bonuses. However, you do get more multi bug chance from things like your stamps and your star signs as well. After that, you have a few more stamps up top, such as the Primer Green, which gives you a multiplier to your first and seventh bubbles, which really helps out your overall catching efficiency and the total agility. 
farther on up, you have two more bubbles, which is the Slabo Critter Bug, which gives you more catching power based on the items in the slab. There are roughly 1400 items in the slab, so this is roughly 28 more catching power at a decent level. So it's not gonna be a huge gain as nothing multiplies the catching power as it does on your tool. However, something, it is still a gain. Um, Slabo Agility is your last green bubble that will affect your catching, and this gives you more agility based on your slab, so it gives you another uh, 14 times your base agility here, so another about 200 agility is still a good gain for you. Moving on to your yellow bubbles, you have a few that help you out. This is Prowessary. This is a multiplier that reduces the amount of catching efficiency that you need to get to the next multiplier on your multi-bug chance. This does cap out at two times from all sources. So basically having this bubble leveled up, having the post office box and having the leak in the dinner menu, all of this gets to two times and then you no longer get any bonuses. Uh, so they all add together. So keep that in mind. You don't need to over level this early game. After that, you have the stamp tramp, which gives you more talent levels in the toilet paper postage stamp. And this gives, as we talked about earlier, there is not a whole lot of benefit to having this leveled up past about 1.5 uh, times multiplier, but it is still something that you can level up if you have the spare talent points. Continuing on, we have Sample It, which increases your total sample your total sample size from your 3D printer. And then farther on up, we have the Big P. This is another mandatory bubble to me. This gives you 30% more bonus from your minor link bonus on your Divinity Gods. This is mostly useful for the Goat God, but others do benefit from it. But this gives you a lot more AFK gain rates, and we'll take a look closer look at this when we get to World 5. Up next is our vials, and we have three vials that we really need to look at, but everything gets a bonus here, so it's important to level all of your vials. So the main vials are the EU Gross Gross, which gives you more catching efficiency. So we want to max this out, but again, every vial gets a bonus because of the vial mastery in the rift. So we want to make sure we're leveling up as many vials as we can. After that, you have Snow Slurry, which increases your printer sample size. And then lastly, you have the Pearl Seltzer, which gives you 3.5% to all stats at level two. Level two is fairly cheap. After that, it gets kind of expensive, but it is a bonus to all stats. So we want to grab it if we can. Moving on to the post office, we have a few boxes here that can help us out. Starting with the catching box, this gives us more catching efficiency, more prowess effect, and more AFK gain rate for catching. And then we also have the food box that gives us more boost food effect. After that, we can really move on to the second tab, which gives us the utility crate for more printer sample size, the sailing crate for more agility, and then the myriad crate, which gives us more base stats and more base efficiency. However, this does require 100,000 boxes to max out, so it would not be a priority for me early game. And wrapping up World 2 with our obals, we have a few choices to make here. Personally, I use the uh, catching obals in my small obals or circle obals, more catching power. Squares give you three catching power. And then the hexagon obals give you a 2% catching efficiency. However, the best in slot is actually using the dilapidated slush obal, which gives you 4% to all skill efficiency. So we'll look at that in the family tab in just a minute. And then for your sparkle obal, I use the all AFK gain rate, which is a new drop from the world five boss. However, if you don't have these, you can use the um, catching sparkle, which gives you 8% catching efficiency. Moving on to the family tab, you can see here, I don't use the catching obals in the small slots as I just don't have enough room in my circles. So I use the base family tab stuff that I always use. For the squares, I'm using the catching power and here are your dilapidated slushes that give you 4% skill efficiency versus 2% catching efficiency. And then for the sparkles, same choice, either AFK gain rates or having the catching efficiency obals. Wrapping it up with our totals tab, you can see I get about 100, 120 agility from here, more catching power, more catching efficiency, all skill efficiency, and then your all AFK gain rate as well. So it's quite a large bonus having your obols done. Moving on to world three, we have three prayers that we want to have equipped and two that we want to avoid. 
The first is the Royal Sampler, which gives us more 3D printer sample size. Make sure you don't over level this as it does nuke your EXP gain. After that is Zerg Rush again, which gives you more AFK gain rate and Skill Dimwit, which gives you more skill efficiency. The ones we want to avoid are Balance of Proficiency, which reduces your skill efficiency, and also Rucksack, which reduces your AFK gain rate. Next up is the Atom Collider bonus. There's only one that really helps us out here. I mean, everything is helpful, but the Helium Bubble Talent Power Stacker gives your talents that require a power of 10 resources, such as your telekinetic logs, more count to it. So you basically, at level six, have six more zeros on the end of your total amount of logs, which means that you're getting a lot more catching efficiency from that telekinetic log talent. Moving on to World 4 and in the lab, we have a few bonuses here that are really useful and the other ones are not so necessary, but they still help out. The first useful one is Sapphire Nevet, which gives you 4% to all stats, which increases your agility and helps out your total catching efficiency. After that, you have the Certified Stamp Book, which doubles the bonuses from all stamps, and then move on to the My First Chemistry Stat, which doubles all of the bonus from your Alchemy Vials. The last one to mention is the Black Diamond Rhinestone, which gives you a 24% multiplier to all of your dinner menu meals, which we're going to be taking a look at in a minute, but it does help out quite a bit. Moving on to the console, we have several chips that we need to use, and these are mostly doublers. So we want the card doublers for your top left and bottom right card slots. And after that, we want the 15% skill AFK gain rate from the blue chip here. Our last four chips are going to be the four orange chips, and these double your star signs, your trophy, your upper keychain slot, so make sure you have your best keychain in that top slot, and then your pendant. So having that 25% AFK gains from the Divine Scarf doubled is a very nice bonus for us. Moving on to the dinner menu, we have the several meals that give us a lot more skill efficiency, starting with corn that gives us 2% skill efficiency per dinner plate level. After that, farther down, we have the rice ball, which gives us 3% skill efficiency per dinner plate level. And then we have the leak that gives us more skilling prowess. Again, this caps out at two times, so make sure you're not over leveling this too early in the game. The last benefit from the dinner menu is from Whip Whipped Cocoa, which gives you the 4% uh, skill efficiency per dinner plate level and is a very large bonus. And keep in mind that all of these dinner menu items are multiplied by that Black Diamond Rhinestone in the lab for another 24%. Next up is the Shiny Pet Passives, which gives us several benefits, and they're all small benefits, but they all add up. These do take a lot of time to level up, but the first one is going to be bonuses from all meals. There are several pets that give us bonuses, and it's 1% per level per pet, so these do add up quite a bit. After that is going to be your base skill efficiency for all skills. Again, several pets give this bonus and it does give us quite a bit because all of our multipliers multiply to this base efficiency. After that, the other one that's going to be really important is anything that gives you more base agility. I know it's a small amount, but it's base so we get multiplied. And wrapping up World 4 is going to be the bonuses from the Rift and the Rift Mastery has bonuses throughout the entire game. However, we're looking at the catching specific bonuses. So we're starting with Skill Mastery. Skill Mastery gives you different bonuses for your total account level in each skill. So all of your characters are added together and you get these different bonuses. So at level 500 total level, you end up with 5% all skill efficiency. And then at level 750, you get 1% printer output. This gives you about 75% all skill efficiency because there's 15 different skills that give that bonus and about 15% printer output. Catching specific skill mastery, you get a few more bonuses, which is 10% catching efficiency, and you get all catching cards are now passive, which means that all of the cards that say catching in it are always applied. You don't need to have that card equipped, which means you can focus on cards that give you things like all AFK gain rate or all skill efficiency instead, and still get the bonuses from your catching card. 
but the rift also offers other bonuses the main one is going to be from vial mastery this gives you a two percent bonus for every vial that you have maxed so at level 13 and you'll get a little crown on it currently i have 38 vials maxed out which is giving me giving me 76 percent more to all of my vials which is a lot of catching efficiency after that is ruby cards this is a grind but this allows you to upgrade your cards one more tier which means more catching afk gains more catching efficiency and uh, it also allows you to upgrade your card set to the next tier so you'll be able to get eight percent more skill efficiency from your card set the other bonus that's worth mentioning in the rift is the infinite star signs and the infinite star signs allow you to have all of your star signs active at all times and then since we're using a card doubler as well we can multiply or double our the uh, star signs that we actually have active so more catching efficiency multi catch chance and things like that and moving on to world five we have a few relics that really give us some large benefits and other ones that are more minor but still help out this is starting with the frost relic which gives us 30 percent efficiency for all skills in world one two and three and this is tripled so we have 90 percent efficiency to our catching in world two and other skills so it's very helpful after that, we also have the sigils and alchemy that get that double the bonus. And then if you have Eldritch form, it's tripled that. So six times the bonus to our alchemy sigils. So taking a quick look at those, we have a few that really help us out, such as the emoji veggie to multiply our golden food for more stats. We also have the pumped kicks for 20 more agility. And we also have dream catcher at the golden level. This is 3% more all skill AFK gain. So that gives us 18% more AFK gains if we can multiply that up with the sigil. Moving back to our relics, we have the Fury Relic, which, multi which gives us more maximum talent book level for our library. And we also have Socrates, which gives us 30% more stats to all stats, which means 30% more agility. The other one that's worth mentioning is the Gold Relic, which gives us more 3D printing. Um, this is not directly sampling related, but it is because the printer uh, basically every day gives you two or three percent more printing output so the longer you wait in between your sampling the more printing you're getting every day and then when you sample it resets this bonus so it really makes us time our sampling at the right time so that we continue getting maximum the maximum amount of bonuses and our last bonus on world five is going to be our divinity altars and our divinity gods we have several bonuses that kind of work together that really give us a lot of good benefits. So what we want to do is have our main character that we're sampling on today linked to the snake god. This gives us 30% AFK gain rates on that character. I would link one to two characters with the snake god and then the other eight to nine characters linked to the goat god. And the minor link bonus from the goat god gives us 3.7% more AFK gain rate for all characters. This means with eight or nine characters, you're getting 30 to 33% more AFK gains. And that's giving you a huge bonus, a totaling up to about 60 to 63% more AFK gains on the character that you're sampling on. So if you look in the link status, you can kind of see I have one character linked and then nine others here, which is giving this character a huge benefit to the uh, overall sampling rate or overall AFK gains. Now with Doot, this means that you have all characters with this setup basically, so that is a big quality of life and it means you can sample with all of your characters at the same time. The other big benefit that you can get from Divinity is the printing itself using Harip. This allows you to print three times more from the 3D printer and this also, also multiplies with the lab bonus. So if you have a character in the lab and linked to Harip, you're printing six times the amount of resources, which is a huge benefit if you're printing something like logs to give you a lot of atoms every day. So now that we have all of the pieces of the puzzle done, the last step is the actual sampling itself. And to do this, we want to go to our first sampling area, which is going to be our bugs or our flies. And when you get here, you want to have a high damage character break open these characters. This is why I have the talents to make sure I'm doing as much damage as I can so I don't have to flip flop characters. And this gives me a multiplier to my bugs. 
So when you're catching, you start catching and then hit sample. And that gives you your sample on your character. From here, you just need to go through the different maps and go to every different zone, break open the bugs and catch your samples. And you're all set with your catching sampling for today. Remember to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you're enjoying our videos. And a huge shout out to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. If you have any thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.